Real quality uh, springtime shed hunting weather right here. <laughs> Need my snow goggles. And welcome back to the vlog. So I've been shed hunting 17 days now. So far this spring, picked I think 20 brown elk sheds. So a little more than a shed a day. Although I've had a lot of days where I didn't pick anything. I also had one day where I picked five browns. But today, headed to a brand new spot, driving about five hours, gonna spend the first night in the camper, and then tomorrow morning, gonna get up super early and pack in for a couple nights into a brand new zone, see if we can't find some antlers. So, so let's get to it. All right, made her into the zone, got the camper popped up. This is like the most comfortable place to sleep ever. You get some nice kind of fresh mountain air coming in the windows, got a heater, got a stove. Camper life is pretty much the best life. I'm just gonna run through a couple of food items that I'm bringing. I've spent so many stinking nights over the years in a tent and just living out of my backpack. And I've learned like, you can go super light and you can bring the most calorie dense foods possible to save weight. I remember like 10 years ago, I used to bring little squeeze tubes of peanut butter and Nutella. On average, you're looking at like 190 calories per ounce. And so I would have a fairly light backpack, but all I'd be eating all day is peanut butter and Nutella. After about half a day of that, you're just tired of it. Mentally, it just makes you exhausted. So nowadays, I kind of go in the opposite direction. I bring a bunch of really quality food. I still try to keep things pretty high calorie count for the weight. So yeah, so that said, um, here's a couple food items that I'm bringing in on this backpack shed hunt. First off, pre-made honey and peanut butter bagel. So good. Oh, I really wanted to just eat this right now, but I gotta save it for tomorrow. I take clover honey and I mix it with organic peanut butter, mix it all together in a big thing and then slap it on this bagel. Uh, in total, you're looking at about 500 calories for this. It also tastes amazing. Next up, these are real heavy, but they taste amazing. So apples, when you eat them, they instantly metabolize and they just turn into energy, you know, just stat. They're also great because as soon as you eat them, uh, the weight of your pack drops significantly. So I've got three apples, one for each day. So I've also got three little halo clementine oranges each day. Citrus fruits actually increase blood circulation. And so if it's really cold out and you get cold fingers often, if you eat uh, an orange, it'll help with the circulation and your fingers won't get as cold. Probably my favorite snack of all time. These are also really high calorie. Per ounce, Honey Singer Waffles. These guys are one ounce, and this specific one is 150 calories. There's other ones that are 160. They taste good, they last forever. I usually do three or four of these per day. I brought a bunch of other food, but it's not as exciting as what I just shared. We'll end this little food segment here. All right, so the boots I'm gonna be rocking, we're gonna be snowshoeing, potentially using my mini skis, my little Altai Hawks with the silver red abidings. Um, so the boots I'm gonna be rocking on this trip, these are La Sportiva Triangle Tower Extremes. I've used the heck out of these guys. They're a great, kind of pretty dang warm. They've also got a toe and a heel groove for crampons and they, um, these specific ones fit into my little ski bindings great but these guys I've had them for about two years now they're pretty well completely worn out they're not waterproof anymore they get really wet pretty much every time I'm out hiking in the snow so this is gonna be a new test um, these are waterproof socks never tried these specific ones before but they're just like a full-on normal sock but they're actually waterproof the brand is Randy Sun not sponsored here I just bought them off Amazon for like 45 bucks so so yeah I'm gonna roll these with these boots for this little shed rip and see how they perform I think when I get back from this shed trip I've got a new pair of Schnee's boots coming that will be waterproof and will definitely be my go-to to replace these guys and the last piece of gear i'll just kind of go over tonight this is my tripod and this is a binocular adapter this is the outdoorsman's binocular adapter i just got some new binoculars the swarovski 12 by 42 nl pures they're probably slash arguably and in my opinion the best binoculars ever they cost an arm and a leg but Man, when you mount those suckers on a tripod, it's pretty insane. They also, as 12 powers, have a wider field of view than my 10 by 42 Swarovski ELs. And, and they fit in my bind harness. Pretty epic little pairing already this, this season. They've helped me 
helped me spot a few sheds that I don't think I would have seen otherwise. But I'm gonna hit the hay. I've got an early morning tomorrow. I'm gonna hike in pretty deep and see what we can't find. So we'll see you in the morning. Alright, made it in. We're in super deep, backpacked in, got gear for two nights, and checking out a brand new zone. I'm in further and deeper into this zone than I've ever been before uh, because it's a real low snow year, and it seems like it has a lot of the elk pushed up higher and deeper than I've ever seen them. Seen uh, wolf tracks, seen grizzly bear tracks, moose tracks, moose poop, a little bit of elk sign. I can't tell if it's fresh or not. I guess we did see uh, two cow elk, but zero bull sign, very little elk sign. The elk aren't where they're normally at, so they gotta be back in this zone somewhere. So we've got about two hours left of daylight. I'm gonna just grind it out here, see if I can just find some elk and yeah, keep it posted. Walking along and for whatever reason, I've developed a really good eye for spotting ticks. And I spotted one on a blade of grass with his little arms out trying to grab onto me. Look at that little bugger. Gross. Well, he didn't hold on too well. Wind blew him off. <laughs> well, noted. Tick check tonight. Now I'm paranoid. Worst part about spring, ticks. <laughs> Almost running out of light, but did spot two groups of bulls, and they are both a long ways out and really high. I'm at about 6,000 feet at the moment, and they're both groups were at like 9,000. It's late enough in the spring that they could have dropped at a much lower elevation and are already moving up to their towards their summer range. But headed back to camp now, and a big old tree just fell in my trail sometime in the last two hours. Wild. <laughs> yeah, look out above, I guess. Jeez. back to the same zone where I saw the elk last night. The question is, did these elk just move in here because it's late enough in the spring? Did they drop their antlers somewhere else? Or are they wintering way back in the zone? It's time to find out. Man, the ticks are bad out here. <laughs> Every about five minutes I check my legs and pull off a couple and see them on little blades of grass. I'm wearing gaiters and rain pants. They're having a pretty hard time getting into my clothes at all, so I'm usually pulling them off the gator down here. But so on my bino harness, I've got bear spray attached on this side. Bino's here, obviously, and I've got a side pocket right here. And right now, I've got my Zolio in that pocket. This is a satellite texting device. It allows me to text anybody from anywhere in the world. It's also got a check-in feature and an SOS feature. So if it hits the fan, press the SOS and local search and rescue will come and, come and find me. I keep it right here on me in case something crazy happens, in case a tree falls on me. Like it's just, it's right here and easily accessible instead of having it like buried inside my backpack. So I've got a buddy in here. He's probably, gosh, he's probably eight miles away at this point. He's got an, a Garmin in reach. As long as he starts the conversation, um, he can actually text this device and we can message each other back and forth. So, so they are compatible with each other, which is super handy. Typical springtime weather, just blustery and windy and snowing. So <laughs> I've seen eight bull elk this morning and a couple of them still have antlers, but they're just little guys. So I just keep imagining a big old brown just laying up on a hillside here somewhere. So hopefully that, uh, that dream becomes a reality here sooner than later. Yes, on the board with a brown.
It's just dumping out right now. <laughs> I'm just walking through a, a big bedding area, working my way towards a, another big feeding zone. Yeah, almost a whiteout in here. Pretty cool. You gotta be kidding. 100 yards from where I walked yesterday, there's a shed, tines down. Shame on me for missing this guy. <laughs> Six point. Three browns and the white strapped on. One thing I found really beneficial is when you're lucky enough to find a handful of antlers, strap them all together first. I use a Titan strap and then attach them to your pack. That way it's just one big awkward object instead of multiple awkward objects. It just rides a heck of a lot better. I'm into the zone of medium-ish antlers. Just found another one. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six antlers. Four brown, two white. Pack's uh, starting to look like a porcupine and get pretty heavy. They ditched the pack because it was getting rather heavy and my knees were starting to ache pretty good. So I hiked up this big slope and down another. All right, fifth brown for the day. Got about an hour left of daylight and there's this one spot I want to hit. I saw a bald bull over there and it's just this like low benchy stuff that looks epic. So I dumped the antlers, marked their locale on Onyx and I'm gonna go run over and just pound the zone until basically until dark and then come back, grab the antlers, head back to camp. Of course to get over there I gotta cross a pretty big chunk of water here. Oh, that was deep. So I've got rain gear on and gaiters that are really tight. I've also got waterproof socks and shockingly my feet are actually dry right now. Thigh deep in one spot, so. Sheesh. <laughs> it's dumping and I'm losing light quick, so. Hitting the most obvious spots. Ah. Oh. Gosh, this is frustrating. There's like a good hour of daylight left, but this storm is just absolutely dumping. I can't see a thing hardly. Fogging up too. <laughs> Dang it. All right, time to cross this bad chicken and get the heck out of here. Oh, that was deep. Oh, crap, that was deep. Oh, all right, my feet are really drenched now. <laughs> water went above the waterproof socks. But well, I know I got so wet. I uh, forgot to zip. I had these unzipped for air. And I ran across and the water got to about here and just bonk. Now I got real sloppy feet. Oh, I can take glasses off. I can see better without my prescription lenses at the moment than I can being all fogged up, so. Unless it clears off, tomorrow is probably going to be a wash. But in the last two hours, actually the last hour, here's how much snow has fallen on my pile of antlers. <laughs> back in the trail, I got about a half hour back to camp. The crew's got a teepee tent with a stove. Hopefully, dry out some of this wet gear a little bit. <laughs> Pretty epic day. Five browns added to the mix and two whites, so no complaints there, but. Yeah, I'll see you back at the tents. Well, the tent, uh, seen better days. A little windy today, blew over. <laughs> All right, hiked out of there. It's about a five mile pack out and then had to drive the truck across some kind of wild snowy roads, but got out and back on the road. Awesome exploratory mission into a brand new zone. I did find five browns and two whites, but they're all little guys. They're all probably fairly fresh droppers. There was a few really old boot tracks and snowmobile or in the, the snowshoe tracks in that zone. So definitely appears that we got beat in there 
which is a little surprising for how remote of a place that is, but um, yeah, one of those spots. Definitely want to hit it next year, maybe go a week or 10 days earlier. So much of shed hunting, it's all about timing, and because it is such a popular thing to do, it's just like, you just gotta beat everybody else. But it's a fine line, because like if you go too early, none of the bulls are gonna drop, and you're gonna push them all out into some areas they normally wouldn't be in, so. But either way, awesome rip into some new country with some new friends. Hopefully we can make that a, a yearly occurrence. But that's a wrap on this vlog. Hope you enjoyed following along on a bit of a shed lap. If you like this, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Uh, also, please comment below if you got questions or thoughts or anything, hit me up below. Thanks again for following along. We'll see you next time.